an easy way to conceptualize this is ASD level one, and it's even more severe with levels two and three, is a disorder such that the individual has a stunted emotional brain. Emotionally, he is somewhere between the age of eight and 14. Chronologically, could be 40, which is make that number up, but emotionally, uh, he's somewhere between eight and 14, but that's very situational. If he is calm, for example, especially when he's engaged in his special interests, he functions as a neurotypical. In other words, nobody would know that his chronological age far exceeds his emotional age. But when you really see it, when it really reveals itself is when he's anxious. That's when he will regress back to his emotional age, whatever that happens to be. That's when you see the meltdowns, the shutdowns, the adult temper tantrums, the having to make you wrong, trying to convince you that he's right. Uh, you can't even say something neutral or he downloads that as criticism, yada, yada, yada. You have somebody whose emotional brain is not fully developed. That causes a problem for you, the NT wife, whose emotional brain is very well developed. So you can see it all makes sense now when you... Use that as the umbrella paradigm, and everything underneath it makes sense at this point. They use the term mind blindness, which is he doesn't understand, uh, we'll use you as the example, what might be in the mind of his, in this case, NT wife. And we, you've heard the term alexithymia. He doesn't understand, in this case, his NT wife's feelings. If you have an emotional brain that is under-functioning, that affects everything in the social realm because we are emotional and social creatures. So if you have an, an emotionally stunted brain, it is by default going to affect your social skills. Can You see that, right? Like people, oh, it's just a condition. Oh, it's a hell of a condition, all right. It's just a different way of thinking. Oh, it's a different way of thinking, all right. It's all of that, that and a bunch more. And the reason that you have grossly underestimated the severity of this disorder is because he seems to function fine in so many other areas of life, doesn't he? Work, works fine. Might be the smartest guy at work, has friends, gets along with the neighbors, etc. But when it comes to me as MT wife, suddenly it's like I'm dealing with, you know, somebody who's a full-blown autistic. Why would that be? Why would it just happen to be you? You're very emotionally complex. You're out of his league. He's got to be firing on all eight cylinders to deal with you. He ain't got eight cylinders. And you chastised him for not knowing how you feel and rising to your level of t intuition, didn't you? Now, I'm not saying he can't be an asshole. Lord knows I can be. But the other 95% of the time, a good 95% of the time, you wanted to label it something else. You know, he's insensitive, uncaring, selfish, narcissistic, sociopathic, etc. Oh, he's gaslighting. All of these terms that you want to throw out. No, you're dealing with someone who, whose emotional brain is stunted. And it looks like narcissism. I'll give you that. Some of these things look exactly like you want to label it. And I'm not faulting you because if it looks like that particular thing, and you don't have any other information other than, you know, you're not really sure exactly what's going on, who wouldn't label it these things? So it's totally understandable. When I say you have grossly underestimated the severity of this disorder, we can put it to the test if you want. You know, there's this thing called EQ, you know what that is, emotional intelligence. There's SQ, social intelligence. There's IQ, which is intellectual ability. And he's very smart. I'm not calling him dumb. He's probably smarter than me. Uh, but he's also very task-oriented and very logical. But when it comes to the social and emotional intricacies, that's where he gets lost. Let's talk about emotional intelligence for a while. And you, you think about your husband or boyfriend, as the case may be, and see if this fits him. I bet you it won't. One of the things, it's the ability to appreciate complicated relationships among different emotions. How good is he at that one? We're going to put it to the test. You think, well, you're grossly over, you're grossly over exaggerating this business of him being emotionally stunted. I'm not sure I believe that. Okay. 
Well, we'll look at what emotional intelligence is. It's also the ability to comprehend emotion language. How good is he at that one? It's also the ability to detect and decipher emotions in faces, pictures, voices, paintings, sculptures. It's also the ability to identify your own emotions. How good is he at that one? It's the ability to harness emotions to uh, facilitate various cognitive activities in the realm of problem solving, specifically relationship problem solving. I'm sure if it has something to do with engineering or computer programming, he'd be great at problem solving. But I'm talking about relationship problem solving. How good is he at relationship problem solving? It's also the ability to identify and assess and control the emotions of oneself. How good is he at controlling his emotions? We could also go further and, and see if this applies to him, too. There's, there's four attributes to emotional intelligence. There's relationship management. There is self-awareness. There's self-management. And there's social awareness. So that's four. The first one, uh, relationship management, that's knowing how to develop and maintain good relationships, communicate clearly, influence others, work well as a team, manage conflict. How well is he doing? The other attribute of emotional intelligence would be self-awareness. This is recognizing your emotions and how they affect your thoughts and behavior. How good is he with that one? I mentioned self-management, this uh, being able to control impulsive feelings and behaviors. It's the ability to manage emotions even when you're under high stress. You could probably do that. Maybe not so much with him, but there's been times where you were highly anxious, but you kept yourself together. And then the fourth one was social awareness. This is understanding the emotions and needs and concerns of other people. It's picking up on emotional cues, facial cues, body language, feeling comfortable socially. How's he doing in that department? Emotional intelligence also has five skills. It's the ability to connect with others through nonverbal communication. It's the ability to quickly reduce stress. It's the ability to recognize and manage your emotions. It's the ability to res resolve conflict positively. And it's the ability to use humor and play when you're dealing with serious relationship challenges. How good is he in any of those? And you want to label it what? What do you want to label it? What have you labeled it? where you're going to have to make some serious accommodations to deal with this thing that I've been talking about. Or you can have the thought that one of the NT ladies in this couples group yesterday had, oh, no, he should know better. He should be able to do better. He should try harder. I'm not up for making accommodations for this. It's just not going to work for me. Okay, fine. Then you keep doing what you've been doing and keep getting what you've been getting. There's not a third option. It's not like, okay, I've got to make some accommodations, or I can just keep doing the same thing that I've been doing, which is more painful than just going and finding a brick wall and beating my head against it. Or I can, there is no third option. Well, I guess there is. You can just leave and bail out. I'm not recommending that. Well, sometimes I do, depending on how bad it gets, but that's not the message today.